quite hot actually. Not in that way. Uh, we have a new addition. It is this lamp. Wonderful, isn't it? No, it's this thing. Behemoth. Yes. That is the name given to it by Ash from our group Facebook group, although I do prefer the name that I gave it to it, which was Historica Agricius Nippolis. I prefer the Latin sound to that. Tell me what you think in the comments. Anyway, yes, uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, I have a thing for cinema technology, old cinema technology, and I've got a few, well, the three 8mm projectors up in the lab, and uh, yeah, this one's a bit larger. There's a bit of a story to this one because I've known this projector for ooh, just under five years and uh, it was sitting abandoned but beyond reach. Uh, we weren't allowed to have them but uh, I was walking around one day and I saw that some of the projectors were in the same room were from the 1930s and they were starting to be carted out so I thought bloody hell. Uh, if that other projector is there, I've got to rescue it. So I emailed the man in charge, the big cheese, and said, now, if you are planning on getting rid of these, would you consider donating this one to a good home? To which he replied, come and show me uh, what you're after, and uh, we'll discuss it. So I went down, and I had to show him that I did know my thing about Projectors, one's just somebody walking off the street going, Oh, yeah, that's nice, like that. The time you were how to operate and uh, the dangers of them, especially the uh, the lights, the sorry, the bulb. And uh, he was happy, so then we had to document the entire thing photographs and descriptions, and that went up to the executives. Well, first of all, it was signed at departmental level. And then went up to executives where they lost paperwork. So after a month of it being up there, they lost it. So we had to sign it again and send it uh, directly to the person involved. And that took quite a while to come back. But eventually we got permission to remove it. So that's what we've done today. And it's getting really hot in here. Because I haven't got the windows open because it's noisy. Anyway, so. Here we are, this is a 1960s, we think, because there's very little to no information about these on the internet. Uh, Philips FP16, it's a 16mm projector, uh, built in the mid-60s, we think. Uh, very high quality on the machine, one of the, uh, apparently, it's one of the finest 16mm projectors uh, you can uh, money can buy and this is uh, cinema standard so these were made for well, cinema use uh, so yes it's been a long time coming it does have a couple of issues uh, with the power but what we'll do we will have a quick tour of this thing externally just to show you the features and then we'll go and show you all the stuff that came with it because there's quite a bit that came with it uh, and then after we've done that we'll have a look at the technical issues uh, in the hopes that somebody although there's, there are people working on it somebody might come up with some information that we don't have this thing's heavy uh, it took eight hours to move it to strip it move it uh, to here three trips and then rebuild it as well so uh, those people in the Facebook group are probably sick of me uh, putting pictures of me doing it today, so there we go. Right, we'll have a quick uh, look around it. Might take some photographs as well, and then we'll go and see what's come with it, and then we'll do the technical side. So, I'll be right back. Right, it's time for some shaky cam, and we may approach Behemoth. So, here we are. Right. Do -do -do. Quick look, it's very difficult to fit this all in camera. Uh, there's the base, the main body. This is the left hand side, which hasn't got much, just the door. And on the right hand side, oh, we take some photos as well. Uh, we've got these lovely reels. And here is all the main mechanism. It does give you a nice guide here on how to thread it. 
But beyond that, I don't know much about these particular types of machines, so I don't know. There's the mechanism. So I'll take pictures as well, so get a good thing. Some controls here. Uh, we're not, not even sure what these do. Obviously got F and it says film on it, so that's good. Uh, hmm, B and H. Balance and height? Don't know. And D -D -D -D. Somebody out there must know. Uh, if you've got an instruction book or access to an instruction book for this, could you please let us know so we can uh, work on what we're doing here. We've got these controls here, which... Uh, not quite sure what they do. But it does come back so he slowly watches. Ready? And then. Hmm. And this control. Dunk. Dunk. I wonder if that's too. Hmm. Don't know. Obviously, this is to do with focusing. Uh, this is something to do with the trap. This one releases the trap. There we go. On me. That noise is the freezer starting up and me belching as well. Disgusting. Alright, here are. we have controls. Focus. Focus. <sighs> Get us Maximus camera. Thank you. Alright, here we have some uh, controls. I have no idea what they do. Uh, these don't stay down. No idea what they're for. And this is obviously play. Well, perhaps play slow, I don't know. And on the back here, a bit awkward to get to. I've had to close the uh, curtain because of contrast on the camera. But I'll take a picture of this. You've got the lamp controls. So you've got uh, whatever that is. <laughs> Maybe that's the fan. That's power to the lamp, I imagine. And that's power off. And an amp meter. And in there is a 500 watt carbon arc xenon lamp. So, uh, wait, okay. Take a quick look inside. Just unscrew it. Need to find something to focus on here. That should do it. Come on, focus. Thank you. Wait. Oop, let's move these things out of the way. <laughs> Sorry about the dodgy camera work. And you can't leave this in there. I'll be back with a lamp in a second. Okay, this is awkward as buggery, but have as much a look as we can on the inside. Uh, there are the chains that go to the top. These chains connect the two. Uh, this is the motor down, down there for the bottom one. You have to ignore these loose wires, they are to the lamp, they're just sitting in there. Uh, what does get me is if I turn this just a knob at the front here, if the inside starts to turn, the chain starts to move, this chain starts to move, but Neither of the wheels spin. I wonder if they're based on a flywheel system so once that gets to a certain speed it uh, catches and that starts up. I don't know. Uh, ease one big ass motor and all the electronics running down. Bottom motor, the wires in the way. Just pull these wires out for you. There you go, and down there. Power supply there. Some caps there for smoothing and a huge transformer there. Uh, and stuff down the bottom. Okay, right, what we'll do, we'll now go and look at what came with it, and then we can do the technical side for those who are interested and uh, want to see the problems we've got with it so far. Right, this is going to be interesting to pull off, but anyway, because uh, it's some big stuff. But the biggest stuff, uh, I put over there. So, as well as the two big reels that you've seen on the machine itself downstairs, uh, there was these tins, two reels, and the tin there. So that's the big stuff, really can't fit that on the table at all. But there's more big stuff to come, because also with it, 
came this. Do, 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 do. Some people are guessing already. But I'll take that away because it's the same as this. Uh, let's open this. Do, do, do. You'll notice all the fragile markings. Because in here lives evil. Uh, is a xenon arc lamp. Well, a xenon carbon arc lamp. That's in its protective shield. In there it's about 40 atmospheres. So if that blows, it makes a mess of you, your face and your hands. Quite a bit. So if you ever come across one of these, don't, uh, don't mess with it. This is what the uh, projector runs on the main bulb. So this is a spare for it. Uh, so if you want to see what happens when one of these blows up, go and see Photonic Induction's channel. He's, uh, he's done a few of them. I am not going to blow this up. The other one is the same. Uh, they are worth quite a bit of money, but I'm going to keep them because they are spares for the system. Uh, and we don't know if we can get the lighting system working. Uh, then I'll keep my spares with me, convert it to halogen if not, we'll also see how it goes. Now, <coughs> in this little box, nothing too exciting, is some leaders. Uh, these are leaders for movies, that's extra tape to put on the, on the front, extra film to put on the front. And it looks like, actually, this one is actually, a film's got something on it, what it is, I do not know. It's difficult to see. Maybe one day we'll thread it up and find out. But that's just a little curiosity there. Now, next one. What have we got here? This one I've been unable to get open, so. Um, yeah, it's completely jammed, this one. So I may. I'll have a few seconds and try and get that open. Right, uh, okay, hmm, so this is Chance a Weirdale Shipping, okay, and inside that grotty tin it's nice and shiny, isn't that nice, uh, and here it is, sniff test, it's, it's very, very, very remote smell of vinegar on this one, so don't know if there's corrosion on this one, if it's, Deteriorating, it doesn't look it. Looks put some damage on the front. It looks fine, and there's little pictures of sheep dogs. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Hmm. No, not really. But yep, sheep dogs. So sheep dog shearing. No, not sheep dog shearing. Duh. Shearing sheep. I'm not shearing sheep with a sheep dog, but using a sheep dog to. Uh, you know what I mean. Right, this one. Kodachrome Original Exercise Marichal. I have looked that up. Can't find anything on it. Uh, it says four of six there. Scribed in, so I don't know. But this is a problem child, this one. Because... <sighs> this one stinks. Of vinegar. Ooh. Yeah, pretty strong smell there, uh, which means this one is deteriorating. There's, there's, oh, there's an older format of film, and over time, yeah, you can see it's uh, over time it uh, leaches a sort of acid which destroys it. And this one stinks of it, so this one has an issue with it. Now, if anybody knows. What preservation steps I can take to uh, try and slow that down on this? Uh, please let me know, and I'll see what I can do. Sixteen millimeter silent. Right. Yes, yeah, so I'll see if there's anything I can do to uh, preserve this one. It's pretty stuck. Uh, all right. Next one. This one is from Aberdeen University. Uh, film Silent. That's all it says on it. Ah, 
Aberdeen University silent and hmm, really can't tell what is on it. So 91 or 16. 16D? Looks like it's been spliced. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to wind that too much. It smells fine. Yep. <coughs> so happy. Uh, but there we go. So, no idea what's on that one. Could be anything. Could be some educational thing anyway. Uh, next one. Very rusty tin. But, no label. <coughs> we have inside. Yeah this one's quite heavy because it's actually got a metal reel and once again bugger all indication of what it is. It's just unwound itself so I'm just gonna try and get it back on. But it does say um, sorry about this I'm just getting it back on. Right let's see if we can find uh, what's going on here. I mean, there's marking somewhere. Ah, it says here. Yeah. Don't know if you can see that. Zebe death the angelus. No idea what that is. Yeah, the. Hang on. Already sadi body li adudu itada. So no idea that about those. Might be French porn for all I know. <laughs> Interesting to find that they have had French porn stashed away for all these years. That one seems fine, apart from its tin. Everybody's happy. Uh, next we have an empty tin, which I'm not going to show you because it's got no money. Uh, I'll show you the back. There you go, empty tin. Uh, okay, this one is obviously an educational one. We've got work of wind, water, run time, 20 minutes. Uh, begin term April 8th, about 8th of May. So, something on wind and water. So let's see. Work of wind and water head. There we go. Got a date? Fourth. Uh, eh? 18th of 4th, 80 something. Hmm, okay. Hmm, don't know about that. Right. Do, do, do. Let's put that back. I've got an interest, quite an interesting one coming up shortly. Where has he gone? He's bugging off. He's hiding. There he is over there. I'll just get in for you. Because right, this one's a bit different. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. I discovered an AML stuff. Uh, try not to give the place away here. Um, come from the California Institute of Earth, Planetary and Life Sciences. Insured US AML. And to open this, you have to pull these and twist. Just uh, QI. And it's got some wood stamps on it. 50p to, the, to pay. 50p? Ow. I wish. <laughs> right. Just get this open. And inside, you will find. It's got a nice padding there, see? And there's our film itself with some nice stuff. Hmm. Okay. We have Hurricane Film Series News. The Hurricane Film Series. Now in use by 200 institutions in 17 countries, has expanded to six films and now provides continuous two-hour playback of th three years of Western Hemisphere weather. That would be interesting to watch, for geeks like me. 16mm uh, black and white silence motion picture. Hurricane Films, also available on video cassette, uh, three quarter inch, 20 minutes, according to the same price schedules. This is 1978, so it's likely to be before VHS, uh, the reel-to-reel -reel video. You don't often see, and this is dated November 78, so nice picture there. More information. 
and beneath that is the film itself. Little direction there. Uh, Hurricane Film Series, Hurricane 1, Summer 75, Hurricane 2, Winter 75, 76, and the dates, and Hurricane 6 added there, 77, 78, uh, May 1st. So this is about the same age as Fluffy. <laughs> That'd be interesting to put on. What I intend to do when this uh, actually gets going is digitise some of these films using it. Don't know how well that'll turn out. But we shall uh, have a look. Uh, right, okay. Right, that's locked away. Okay, other things we got. Another reel. This thing, which says, Profes oh, Prof Fisher, okay, September 81. So, this could be anything, couldn't it? Some experiment, we don't know. Probably not been used since just after 81. Be interesting to see. I don't know if I can ever put this up on the internet. But, I shall have a look once we get going. Geography department. Hmm, could be interesting. We shall see what we shall see. And the last of these do, 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 is another one which I have no idea what's on it. It has no markings at all. So, this could be anything. And the header goes straight into the film by the looks of it, so, yep, can't even get a clue from that. It's probably some academic project. We don't know, I shall have a look once this thing's up and running. Uh, we also got a box of 8mm and 16mm uh, projector bulbs over there, but I can show that. Because uh, there's loads of them, and we've got other things to do. So, oh yes, one of the things you should wear when handling the bulbs for these is a full face mask and gloves. There's another glove somewhere, it's gone missing at the moment. And gloves, so I actually picked these up from the place as well and used it when we stripped the thing down. So, that's the stuff that came with it. Anything else? I've missed. No. Ah, oh, there's the other glove over there. So that's all the stuff that came with it, which is quite a bit, and some stuff that should prove interesting. If anybody has any access to some 16mm movies that they know are going out or anything like that, please let me know. I'll be interested in acquiring them. Uh, other than that, let's go back downstairs uh, for your technical people. Let's see what issues we've got that need solving before we can power this puppy on. Right, so technical issues time. Uh, thing is, it's got no power. I'm just trying to get down here because it's got a freezer right there and it's very awkward. Uh, these are the cables to the light. So you can see, we've got three cables with no end on them. Now, these run straight up into the box itself. Uh, which is in here, which contains a, a ballast at the top, I think it's a ballast, it's I've got some pictures uh, I'll get for you which can show you, but what we think we need is a bridge rectifier to give this DC, we're not sure at the moment, but we do think it uh, runs on normal mains and uh, that should get this going, hopefully. Now, the main system. Uh, there's a debate on whether this is three phase, uh, three phase or two, or it can be run on 240 volts. Some people say it's three, some people say it's 240, but if you look down the bottom, where I that's possibly where I imagine the mains leads would go. Uh, they've been cut away. It's difficult to do in this position, but... Yeah, here leads have been removed. Uh, 
it looks like. Oh, okay, no way. Yeah, it looks like there's a junction for positive and negative possibly there. I don't know where the earth would go. And then that goes away, it looks like, to this. Possibly to the power box here, or possibly up to this power switch. Uh, we're unsure at the moment. Possibly goes up to the power switch and back down. There are so many wires, it's very difficult to tell what's happening. Uh, but they've been cut away. Other things have been cut away is this. Now, I imagine, judging by this here, that this is to do with accessories, speakers. Uh, as you can see, it's a blue sticking out, and a brown, and another brown here. And that's it, looks like they took them out, the buggers. And that one doesn't need no proper connection. Oh, that'd be fun. I think they're just screwing type. Oh, yeah, they're just screwing type, so we ought to do that. But yes, it looks like these ones went to speakers or something. Actually, they go to this transformer here. Uh, that comes in and goes out to. Wherever that goes, I have no idea. So, we shall be doing some more tracing of this, but at the moment, it looks like it goes back up there. Hmm. So, if anybody's got any access to any plans on this thing, uh, or instruction manual, please let us know. Uh, it's very irritating. Hmm. So where's the mains thingy? It must come out of there, and that comes out of there, then that goes to feed that, and then that comes back and feeds that. How strange. It comes back, feeds that, goes out there by the looks of it. Hmm. Interesting. So I don't know why this wire is cut here. It seems to go down this one. To there. Back to there. And then that comes down to this one. Hmm. If you want any more photos or anything uh, to look at this, um, please let me know. And um, the mysterious thing here, which is, I imagine, is the mains lead. Uh, so we're still not sure if this is three phase or two phase. Uh, but it can be converted to two phase apparently. If it is, uh, there is a gentleman who's trying to work on the manuals, but if you, uh, is trying to find manuals, but if you do have them. Uh, please let us know or any diagrams or anything for this. It would be very, very handy. Uh, I'll feed some pictures in as well, taken before, so you've got a better view. And, uh, yes, if we can get this powered, this powered, the light, get the main unit powered and serviced. Make sure these mechanicals are working nicely and serviced nicely. Uh, we should be able to get this thing going and have a nice 16 millimeter projector and get to see what some of the stuff and perhaps even get this in the back garden and do an outside show which would be quite fun all the belts appear to be in good order the rubber belts that motor is massive and so is that transformer so let me know what you think in the comments any ideas uh, any suggestions uh, ah there's a yes good that soldering there's no uh, plug and play here, there's no yeah, ports, it's all soldered all over the place so, yep any ideas, suggestions uh, any diagrams, any instruction manuals you've got access to please help <laughs> and uh, yep, please leave any comments you find relevant apart from the ones down below and if you've not uh, come across this channel before and you like what you see please subscribe and I also have social media links down below so uh, if we can get out from here dun, 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 dun. put the door up put this light back on Ooh, put the light over here without tripping up 
light doesn't want to know. Oh, come here, light. Right, so there you go. That is the Philips FP16, which is what we think the model number is. Uh, yes, it's been a long time coming, but finally we got it here. Now we're just going to get the bugger working. Thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. Yeah. <laughs>